I'm Josh. Um, I'll give a few seconds to allow everybody to come in, and uh, and then we'll get started with this uh, this this high speed uh, webinar today. Hope you're all doing well and are safe. And uh, are uh, if you're in school right now, or if you're preparing for school, that you're you're taking plenty of time for yourself and you're you're putting in the work that needs to be done. Um, so we'll talk some more about it here in a little bit. I'll give a couple more seconds. And uh, I want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, and even if you weren't here in person, if you, you you visited this webinar in the next days, weeks, years, months, whatever, uh, I hope you find it um, useful for you in your in your career and in your uh, educational progress. So uh, once again, I'm Josh Lawler. Uh, I was a FNP student earlier this year. I graduated in May from Missouri State University, and I am now I have a doctorate in nursing practice, um, board certified through the American Association of Nurse Practitioners as an FNP, and I still hold my ER certification from when I was a nurse. Um, but I'm not really using that right now. I'm mainly doing primary care. Um, kind of unique situation I'm in right now is. Uh, I'm, a, I'm still on active duty uh, as far as the military goes. So uh, I am an Army Nurse Corps officer and I uh, am practicing out of Fort Jackson, South Carolina. But I've been with Picmonic for about a year and a half. I discovered it through my wife uh, when she kind of mentioned that it, it was available out there and it might be something to check out. And so I did and uh, used it for six months until and thought I might be able to contribute even more by, by working with the company. And so I, I came on and, and have enjoyed myself ever since. Um, I've been a nurse for about 11 years now, just worked in a variety of locations, med surge, primary care, specialty care, same day surgery, in management, administration. And then my favorite is the emergency room. Um, and now I'm back in primary care as a, as a provider. Um, so it's a kind of a different experience on that side than being an RN in primary care. Um, so my experience with Picmonic, pretty much, um, I, uh, I used it as a, mainly like a warm up to my study sessions. So just to get my brain going, you know, I was always like, I don't, you know, everybody kind of drags their feet when they come to the studying session. But, you know, to have something where, you know, you know, you're being challenged right there, you know, with uh, I usually did about 40 daily questions to begin. And uh, I would use it as a warm up to really get my brain going. Um, once I got done with uh, with the warm up, um, I would sometimes watch a, a video or two I hadn't seen yet, but I would reserve a lot of my uh, Picmonic viewing content for whatever I was studying that day. So um, that's kind of was my routine for about a year or two, and uh, um, I I uh, kind of was like. Um, kind of on the fly as far as what I felt interest in studying uh, when it came to the Picmonics or, or even during my study session, if I chose to watch a Picmonic or watch some other media. Um, so I, I wasn't as organized as some people are. And uh, I, uh, I blame my ADD for that. And I also blame being an ER nurse for that because uh, we, we thrive on chaos and unpredictability. And we are generally organized to the point that we can achieve whatever we need to do, but not to the point where we can uh, plan out our future in uh, weeks or months ahead. So uh, that was just how I did it. And um, so my favorite, uh, I just going to talk about my favorite Picmonic character in videos that uh, resonate with me. Uh, my favorite character is the War Fairy uh, uh, is, is her name, but she, uh, she, as the Picmonic character for Warfarin. Um, and uh, in this video, it's uh, just talking about Warfarin and relationship with uh, vitamin K and the extrinsic pathway um, with coagulation. And uh, so I just thought she was cool. You know, uh, she's probably got a really cool backstory uh, about how her homeland she needed to defend. And, you know, I, I just think uh, the way that we develop characters in Picmonic are always interesting and uh 
we uh, we I was just kind of talking with one of my coworkers too, and uh, we try to be as inclusive and as diverse as we can. And uh, we we've, we've found ourselves to be um, to to try and focus more on that since uh, America is 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 kind of changing the social way. So um, I think it's it's good to remain innovative and it's good to remain inclusive with people. So that's uh, I think it's good that we 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 have that focus. Um, the videos I find most, uh, as far as like the video series that I like the most, or not the video series, try the Picmonics I like the most, um, were the developmental milestones for pediatrics, uh, and that's available for nurse practitioners, for the doctors, for the nurses, uh, but they are very useful when you are trying to uh, retain that knowledge as far as like, if you see a three-year-old in clinic and you want to you know, our four-year-old in this case in, in clinic, and you want to um, be able to uh, see what is like expected of them because all child, all children are different. My children are different from everyone else's children. You know, they may not be able to do certain things or they may have focused on other things and they're, they're very um, profound in those things. And so uh, it's not necessarily like a, a report card that you're doing with developmental milestones. You're, you're just trying to see if there is anything that may be a barrier to these, these kids in order to, to achieve that. So, you know, like, you know, are they having, um, say, um, Oscar, oh, is he, sorry, uh, <laughs> I've been at school too long, Oscar Schlatter's disease, you know, where they have knee pain uh, and they're not able to, to run because, uh, or maybe they, they were running too much and they need to rest and, and they, maybe other things need to be focused, you know, so like knowing if, uh, if some sort of disease process, I don't know if that's a great example, but it wasn't really, so uh, if some sort of uh, underlying developmental disease process is hindering their ability to progress forward. So, uh, so Joan Altman says, I'm having trouble navigating the site. I know what to, I need to look for, but once I, okay. Uh, we'll go back to the questions. I think uh, my, my coworker might be able to help us with this situation. Uh, and it's in the chat, um, Heather, if you see that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll continue on. We'll try and fix uh, fix that. <clears throat> and um, okay, so uh, some of the keys to nurse practitioner school and and, and being ready and, and good doing it. Um, you need basically just start with knowing yourself. You know, knowing yourself, who you are. You know, as far as a person, as a nurse, as a student, and and knowing what those strengths are, knowing what those weaknesses are. Um, a lot of times people want to go to get their graduate degree or become a CRNA nurse practitioner for a, a, you know, a variety of reasons. Um, sometimes if you are not including what you want as fulfillment in a professional career from that, like you don't, and you don't see yourself as that sort of person and being happy, you're just trying to do it to achieve some other outcome. It may not be something that you want to do uh, or there may be something else that you want to do so you really got to like ask yourself that first all right so that's kind of like my uh, existential um advice but <laughs> anyway so actually like being in nurse practitioner school um my key right now uh, was like keeping a steady routine and being able to have at least some predictability as to what was going on in my life at that time because we did, um, I did school during COVID, <laughs> which was not cool. And, and um, so predictability outside of school was, was, was not great. And, uh, you know, I was, um, there was some good things that we had going on. We were safe. My family was healthy. I was healthy. Um, I still had opportunity. I still had an opportunity to learn. Uh, my kids still had an opportunity to, to learn as well. Um, and so it's just kind of, uh, if you can try and keep yourself into a steady routine in, in which you're also balancing what your needs are at the time, in, in addition to what your academic uh, demands are, then you're going to be able to be successful. 
it just takes persistence with that, you know? So making sure that you're getting plenty of break time, plenty of rest, plenty of time for yourself in addition to the academic demands, because there's always going to be the academic demands. There's always going to be the, the tests, the, the papers, the, the quality improvement projects that are always going to be there taking up all your time and no one is advocating for you as a nurse. So remember when you're a nurse or if, if you're not a nurse, you're going to nurse practitioner school in a non-traditional role, you know, that you advocate for your patients or you advocate for whoever you're working with uh, or working, uh, whoever works for you, you're always advocating for them, you're advocating for yourself. So in this case, as a student, you are also advocating for your, your own physical and mental health. You know, there's not going to be anybody else that's going to be doing it for you. So you have to make sure that you take care of that so you can accomplish this, this mission for you. Um, as far as the COVID-related studying habits, uh, there's a blog post. Um, Heather, I don't know if, if you picked it up, but uh, there's a blog post out there about studying at home with kids that I wrote. And uh, basically, the key to I'll, I'll just concise, I'll, I'll, you don't have to look for it. The, the con, con, consensus on that is boundaries, <laughs> making sure you have boundaries for you, uh, for your kids, and for your study. So, um, you like multitasking works to a point, and it doesn't, it really doesn't with kids. Um, so, like being able to study and multitask at the same time is it's not easy to do because a lot of times you need that really intense focus to understand and be with whichever you're trying to uh trying to grasp um and in order to do that you got to set yourself apart from what's going on uh, in your house if you can uh you know or going to another location if you can which at the time we couldn't you know everything was off limits all the restaurants were closed all the coffee shops are closed you know, libraries were, were limited. So um, I kind of set up my own little area. Um, I had to use the lock on my door sometimes to, to really separate myself. And I was lucky enough to have my spouse at home in order to watch kids. But uh, it's that sort of thing that you can do. Um, some of the uh, things I wrote in the blog post too was, it, was, it had to do with planning, you know, knowing when your kid's bedtime was, if, if you knew that. And knowing that you can get to that point and study then, um, a lot of times you may be really tired by that point. So knowing that you may need a cup of coffee or, or some tea at the end of the day in order to get yourself going and get to that study session. Um, so it's things like that, you know, it's just uh, the expectations and being trying to prepare for that. Um, all right. So progressing on uh, with Picmonic. Uh, primarily, uh, my interaction with Picmonic was via the computer in a web based. And it's because I am a millennial who remembers how to use a gateway computer. And I remember when I was in fifth grade and we had computer labs where the computers didn't go anywhere. We had to go to them. And so I think it was that uh, sort of foundation that I have uh, as far as interacting with, with uh, computers. Um, I, I was late. I was late in using the app, but then I found that the app is very helpful, especially when you're away from the computer, obviously. Um, so that was uh, during like my last year of clinicals uh, of this last year. And, um, and I was in the clinical site more often than I was in my office studying. So having the app available at that time was really helpful in between patients, especially for the patient I just saw and I'm trying to understand what's going on. Um, you know, pulling up a Picmonic and seeing it, um, or even like if we had downtime, you know, quizzing myself, or, to, or being able to interact with my preceptor at the time you know, regarding a picmonic that I have. So that was helpful, definitely. And uh, I've known some peers and, and others that, you know, if they have to ride mass transportation and they're sitting there for a while and they have their books or whatnot, um, you know, they can pull out the app too and be able to do it then. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before I continue uh, with maybe some of the uh, resources that I used uh, in addition to Picmonic was that, you know, you have your textbooks, you have your, your nurse practitioner textbooks, um, you have your variety there, and, you know, you look at uh, the pathophysiology book, and it's like that thick right there. Um, so how I interacted with my textbooks and, and other media 
was I would use my textbooks as the foundation uh, in the study session. So this is during study sessions or, or after a lecture. Um, I, would, uh, I would use my textbook as the foundation to what I was trying to understand because I knew, or the lecture notes, because I knew that's what uh, was demanded of me. But then I would, I would have, I would give myself the time to um, explore that more you know, with the picmonic, with uh, the other um, ones I'm gonna mention here, like osmosis, um, you know, being able to interact with that uh, information in a different way allows you to retain it better, especially like if you encounter it in a clinical site. So you have that foundational aspect of reading the textbook and you, you know, you've read this or that, and then you see it like, uh, close to the amount of, you know, with, within a proximity of time that you actually read about it, the retention is just amazing. And that's why the, one of the reasons I think Monarch works is because, you know, you, you read it, you were, you were familiar with it, but then you're interacting with it in a completely different way. And it just, you know, it gets put into that long-term memory process and recognition, not necessarily maybe consciously that you can pull it out, but sometimes when you're in a situation and something clicks and triggers you to remember that, it, it'll be there. Um, I've had that happen multiple times, especially like uh, being able to like, you know, speak with my, my, med my medical doctor peers, um, you know, if we're talking about pretty advanced pathophysiology, uh, I, can, I can retain or I, I'll be able to mention something that I remember and then we can explore that. And uh, a lot of times, uh, I'll, I'll come back learning a lot more uh, from that sort of conversation just because I had that little bit of information back there. Okay, so free resources, um, YouTube channels and blogs. Uh, we have another blog post from Picmonic um, on a lot of these, uh, these YouTube influencers. Um, personally, I am not familiar with anybody on the list that we have except for Armando Hasudugan. Hasudugan, <laughs> I always try to remember his name because um, I spell it wrong sometimes. So uh, he is a, uh, he's, I think he's actually a medical student or he is a medical doctor now, but he does a lot of pathophysiology um, as far as uh, similar to what like osmosis does. And I'll talk about osmosis in a moment, but it's, it's free. Um, and, you know, he's an independent guy uh, doing it himself, you know, creating these, uh, these uh, wonderful videos that um, explore pathophysiology through art you know, as, as far as how he draws things. And uh, it's, it's very good for, for attention and using it to supplement what you're learning. Um, and then these other um, influencers are definitely uh, really, really good influencers, you know, according to some of my peers who, who've used them. And um, uh, so that's Nurse Nicole, Nurse Liz, Fatima, Francesca, Jasmine E. So um, name in the chat, please, yeah, uh, we will, let me do that. So he's he's fantastic, and uh, the other ones uh, I know that like Marley's one of our influ or one of our Picmonic scholars as well. I think she's used them, uh, or she really advocates for those other influencers as well. So, um, all right. So go going on to like the top three things that I would use, uh, you know, three tools that I, I really found useful during nurse practitioner school, um, in, in addition to Picmonic. So this would be four because Picmonic is one. So uh, the first one was osmosis. Um, I, I came across osmosis just through YouTube, you know, and through Armando's uh, videos. Um, but uh, I, I discovered that they had a lot of content. So right now they have 1,800 comprehensive videos, 16,000 flashcards, 3,300 test bank questions. And, but it's, it's not just for nurse practitioners. It's for medical doctors. It's for um, other sorts of, of disciplines and stuff. I don't know what else they do. I'm sure that they do other ones too, but probably nursing as well. Um, but anyway, so like they're uh, just to like, I, I ended up paying for a subscription just because they, I found that they were really, um, really helpful videos, but a lot of them I couldn't get to because you, you had to have a subscription in order to do it. Um, and so I, I, I paid for a subscription and, and I found myself Really, a lot of times with the Picmonics, they actually have embedded osmosis videos in there. 
And so I'd be on a Picomonic, I'd see the osmosis video and I'd go there and I would have access because I'm already a subscribed member. So um, I would do that. And uh, they do a lot of times. So if, if, uh, if price is a problem for you, um, you know, in, in, in trying to pay for some of these things, I do advocate for them. It is worth the subscription amount. Um, but, it, you know, if, if you do have some problems, sometimes they do have deals, um, just like Picmonic does, you know, as far as, uh, um, you know, uh, percentage off, whatever. Um, so just keep an eye on that. But Osmosis Prime is, is definitely worth it. Uh, Moleskin Studio um, on my iPhone, it, they have two apps called Time Page and Actions. And this did help me organize a little bit better. Um, a lot of gratification comes from knocking tasks off sometimes, I think, and being able to embed it into a calendar as far as what needs to be done for that day is very helpful. And that's what those two apps do. So one's kind of a calendar, one's kind of a task list, um, and they work with each other because they're, they're both from the same developer. And uh, so I use them for organizing my work, uh, organizing my hit dates on the quality improvement project for that last year, you know, knowing when I need to have this paper done and that paper done, what I need to prep then, you know, so that was good. And having something like that, even if, even if you don't have that, uh, is, is very helpful for, for, for prepping, um, especially with technology if it interacts with, uh, so the calendar interacted with my personal calendar, my professional calendar, you know, everything that was expected. And then the action sheet was my own um, as far as task lists that needed to be done. And I would do, in addition to economics, I would have other tasks there too. So uh, the second product you mentioned, it was Moleskin Studio Time Page and Actions. Time Page and Actions are the, the two apps, but the developer is Moleskin Studio. So Moleskin creates those, the books that are really cool um, and fancy that you see people sitting at Starbucks writing in, you know, their, their journal and stuff. Um, but they do apps too, apparently. So, yeah, well, I'm guilty of that as well. Anyways, uh, so human, uh, the last one is human DX. So uh, human DX uh, being like the acronym for diagnosis. Um, this this uh, app, I, uh, I think I, I heard it on a podcast one time and they were talking about it and I was interested in it. So I'll read what I, I wrote about it. It said a relationship between the global medical community combining collective intelligence, individual experience and machine learning to educate and standardize knowledge across the world. And when you, when you like interact with this app, so HumanDX, it is free, this one is free. Um, it's, a, it's multidisciplinary so, and across the globe. So it's, it's doctors, it's, it's nurses, it's nurse practitioners, it's physician assistants, it's all these people from across the globe, different, different backgrounds. Um, and basically they, uh, they come together and um, they bring cases forward. So they may or may not have an answer to these cases, but a lot of times it's the, uh, what they've collected so far uh, that you uh, are able to kind of like learn what they learned. So you, it's like you're on the team, even though it's like thousands of people on this team to learn what they learned. And there's a lot of resolution, the resolved cases. So then you find out treatment plans, things like that. So that's that's a good app as well. All right. So I saw Victoria Wright, a uh, good resource for clinical guidelines, clinical guidelines. Uh, let's see. Um, let me think about that for a second. Depends on what kind of clinical guidelines you're looking for. Uh, a lot of times, you so the the clearing houses that they have if i remember correctly um i'm trying to remember the name of it oh the uh yeah the national guideline clearing house um uh, who is that yes this is being recorded and you can review it afterwards saying like all right so um the uh the National Guidelines Clearinghouse is from the um, Department of Health and Human Services for the United States. Uh, that provided, I don't know if it's like still up and being updated, but um, that does provide a lot of like uh, good guidelines. But most of the time when you're trying to find a specific guideline for a specific thing, you wanna look for the professional organizations that are in charge of that guideline. So take for instance, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the 
organization. So say like asthma. Uh, I don't remember the name of the organization, but there's two organizations out there that do asthma guidelines. And um, one of them is like more official than the other one, but one of them, like the other one has like better research. So a lot of times you're gonna see these like organizations uh, that are advocating for a certain disease process or treatment plan. Gina, Gina, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that, Dennis. Um, yes, absolutely. So they put out that the guidelines and it's free on the internet, you know, uh, especially if you have, um, if you have your, uh, your, your university's library and you can go in there and be able to find it from there. Um, that way you, you know exactly what, you, what, uh, you know, that it's a scholarly reference, that it's something that, uh, that is going to be, um, providing good evidence. Um, so it's those organizations. So like the gold, the gold guidelines too for COPD, you know, those are, those are guidelines associated with that. Um, I know for instance, uh, keep this one in the back, um, of your mind, but the, um, uh, actually I don't want to give you the bad information. So I'm not going to talk about that one, but it's a, the trauma references associated with, uh, uh, it's associated with the Army, um, and I, it may come from Brook Army Medical Center. I think that's where their research lab is. But anyway, so talking about trauma guidelines, um, and that's where one of the formulas that we're familiar with in nursing school, the, the, the burn formula with a fluid resuscitation comes from. So it's like things like that that you're going to be looking for. Uh, you may have to do a little bit of, of research, but a lot of the common disease processes like diabetes have big, big uh, professional organizations advocating for guidelines and that's what's kind of important so okay we'll continue with questions if uh, you have anything further on that too just let me know okay I'm trying to think of what else to mention All right. If um, and if we don't have any more questions, you make my account find NP sites. Make my account like your Picmonic account, uh, Daphne. Okay, Picmonic account find NP sites. There's an NP playlist on there, a nurse practitioner playlist. We've been we've been working with actually I've been kind of active with that. Um, so uh, I can't remember exactly. Heather might be able to help you after this um, as far as. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, they, the, there's already a built playlist for it for NP, uh, NP specific. So yeah, that, that'll help you as far as the organization goes. So it's like something that's already built, you know, you don't have to build your own playlist. License carrying preceptors. <laughs> I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> I hate the way that, that our country does preceptors. Um, so First of all, a lot of times preceptors are, are precepting out of the goodness of their heart and not necessarily any other reason than that. And that's, that's hard to do when you already have a patient workload. Um, so as far as securing preceptors, I know that, and I was, I was in the, uh, uh, I'll, I'll go to the other question. I'll give this, this, this for about a minute. Let me talk about it for about a minute. Um, so as far as this, securing preceptors, my school was really helpful. So Missouri State University was my school. Uh, they were really helpful with having relationships already for nurse practitioner students. And so they, they pretty much um, allowed us to pair with people. And they would pair us based on a lot of times with, with, uh, with personality, um, you know, with, uh, with the type of student we are you know, that sort of thing, or what we would need as students, you know, so they would pair us with a variety of preceptors. But um, like I said, it, it was, it was kind of difficult to, uh, to maintain an accurate list of preceptors, because um, things happen too. preceptors move preceptors pick up new jobs, pick, you know, all that sort of thing. So it is really difficult. I, and I, I, I feel y'all's pain associated with that. Um, as far as securing preceptors, uh, getting a part of like um, the uh, the organizations that kind of pair you up. I think it's uh, APD. Eh, 
I don't remember it quite. I'd have to look in that. Um, Heather, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this one offline too, um, because I'll, I'll come back to it to give the, uh, uh, the network that I was a part of that, that really kind of um, uh, brings the preceptors together, uh, brings students together with preceptors. So I, I will answer this question off, off, offline. Um, all right, so off topic, let's see. So, you can understand. so uh, any resource to view anatomy uh, on Dennis. And um, like I said, Armando Hasdugan, Osmosis Prime, you talk about um, Picmonic itself. You know, when you talk about um, anatomy, that's where I learned a lot of my anatomy, uh, especially bone structures. Um, that is just diving into that. Is, is fantastic. Um, skeletal system, you know, because when you talk about musculoskeletal injury, then after that, and and you're talking about a lot of times, if you're having to talk about anatomical um, locations, I, I remembered a lot of my picmonics from that. So I would say that is a good one. Start with that um, as far as anatomy goes. Uh, radiopedia, which is x-ray, um, radiology type of things. A lot of times they'll do imaging on, on anatomy and that may, that may help you uh, kind of see things that you're gonna see as a nurse practitioner. Um, so learning, and, and then of course, there's always the anatomy textbook or the flashcards and things like that. Uh, pathophysiology playlist, where did you say you built a pathophysiology playlist? Um, I don't, I know that there's a pathophysiology uh, content that's that's grouped on on Picmonic. Um, it has a lot of things on it, uh, and I think that might be helpful if if you're not um, familiar with it. Uh, start there and see uh, what you need as far as that goes. The, it's built so the way that pathophysiology playlist, if I remember correctly, it's built based on system, so respiratory, nervous, cardiac based on there and then it goes to the uh, disease process. Perfect. There it is. Yeah. So uh, just just typing in uh, pathophysiology, um, it brings up in like right here. So it's going to bring up the key term on that. And uh, but if you look on the left, if you can filter by, um, I don't know, there you go. Perfect. So intestinal disorders, lymphomas, and that'll talk about it. That's that's actually been perfect. I didn't I didn't even know that. Uh, we had it like that. That's awesome. Yeah, so that that'll be really helpful starting out for you to, to kind of check that out um, as far as the pathophysiology playlist. All right. Does the site have PNP specific playlist? Not at this point. I'm sorry to say. And we're building pediatric content, uh, uh, more pediatric content, and we're trying to revise a lot of it. And uh, I I've talked with some other scholars about how to organize um, our NP, the nurse practitioner way. Um, and I was, I was kind of advocating for pediatric acute, pediatric chronic, because I knew we have our pediatric nurse practitioner peers here. Um, so that way you have easy access to it. And uh, it's, it's continuing to work, um, but we are, we are working more on that. Um, right now there is a pediatrics, uh, Heather could probably pick it up. Uh, there is a pediatrics um, playlist that has a lot of pediatric uh, content on it for a PNP specific. The vaccinations, that was a good one, remember that. There you are. So the playlist pediatrics. There you go. Perfect. So then it does organize it in a, a pretty good way, though. Fundamentals, path physiology, patho, and health screening and maintenance. So that's a good place to cite to start with uh, pediatrics. Um, and then, of course, I'm not a I'm not a board certified pediatric, pediatric nurse practitioner. So you know that program may be a little bit different for you. Um, we always appreciate feedback on what, what is needed in a lot of the programs. So, you know, please feel free to use that um, email, the feedback at, at Picmonic. Uh, if you see stuff that we don't currently offer that we need to develop, because uh, that'll, that'll help us develop it. All right. I think I need to scroll down. Here we go. Hang on a second. 
All right, same in Canada with the preceptors. Yeah, they just so my my idea is that the preceptors they need to like have an incentive. I, I think that either they have less patience so that they can precept, or they need to get paid so that they can precept. You know, there needs to be some sort of standardized approach with these universities, but there's not. Is this not any over leadership on that? on the universe above the universities that says that this needs to happen and that's kind of what the medical institutions do as far as residencies go you know um they're getting reimbursed for being uh resident directors for being preceptors to the doctors you know so building it on that would be would be very helpful uh for our own uh preceptorship that's my opinion not pickbonic's opinion just mine so that's it uh, you know of any good online tutoring services for FNP school? Fitzgerald. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, F-E-A-F-H-E-A -E uh, dot org, I think. Is it on here? Yes, there it is. I didn't mention that? Ah, oh, shoot. Um, so this was my review course for boards. I use this specifically. But uh, as far as like having, they, I think they have online tutoring services. Um, I may be speaking out of turn on that. They, they may not, but they are a very good reference and a very good resource um, for, because uh, they, they whenever I, I took the board certification course, there was like um, opportunities to speak directly with uh, these, these people that were presenting the course and being able to ask questions, um, being able to do that. So it was like six months of that, only six months as far as, but they may have something longer as far as a tutoring service. Um, I just know, find a, another thing for, for tutoring is, is find the peers that you know that you can study with and um, be respectful of each other as far as knowing where your limitations are, where their limitations are, and being able to discuss things. Uh, that's like a good uh, surrogate for, for tutoring, is, is learning from others who, who have picked up other sorts of things. Um, you know, they could be the smart ones, but they also, they could also be the ones that are just really tenacious and, uh, you know, they, they are, are willing to, to, uh, to like, uh, to, to, to discuss, you know, to have a respectful discussion on certain things. So that, that's a good way to learn. Uh, University of 10 is across the country from where I actually am. There are no actual lectures a quarter or otherwise. Uh, any suggestions with either Picmonic or Osmosis to help with that? So university across the country, and there are no lectures recorded. I assume it's so it's like uh, you're getting your lectures through uh, kind of a PowerPoint, um, you know, or they have like a, a drop folder where you go in and you pick it up. Um, okay, wait, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Okay, yeah. So um, so having that, so it's like a asynchronous is what they call it. Asynchronous means you're not synchronized with. The university and, and their lectures or, or that your peers or anything like that um, that is a blessing for you <laughs> i know it doesn't feel like it but that means that you have a lot of opportunity to explore their content and then be able to add into it um, and i was kind of in that during COVID, especially because we we they were trying to figure everything out so um asynchronous being uh i was able to kind of look at what the what the the minimal expectations were for that day uh, as far as a study session and then build into it. So uh, you, you have you, you celebrate your creativity in that. Celebrate your ability to to explore certain things with that. Um, find ways to do it, you know. So that's that would be my suggestion associated with asynchronous lectures. Okay, I'm gonna vote for peds. Yeah, go peds. I like peds. I mean, I, I'm FNP, so we see peds too, but we're not specific. So um, build a custom playlist, absolutely agree on preceptors. Yeah, okay, last call for questions. All right, anybody else? Going once, going twice, three times. All right, so I wanna say thank you from, uh, thanks, and I didn't know Canada was here too. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'd love to visit you someday, it'd be fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the, uh, just kind of finish up here. Uh, the, the recording uh, will be available tomorrow on YouTube um, and we'll email you a link as well, uh, which uh, usually we do that. I want to announce the winner. 
So for one free subscription to Picmonic Premium, oh, Kristen McBurney, Kristen McBurney, you have won the one free subscription to Picmonic Premium. So congratulations, Kristen. Uh, also, 30% off when you subscribe to Picmonic in the next 30, 24 hours. There's two ways to get this. Click on the chat right now, or you can also wait an hour to receive the email with the link directly with the discounted price. And uh, yes, thank you all for attending. It was uh, fantastic. Um, I wish you all well in your nurse practitioner programs. Please, uh, anytime, um, I think the feedback at Picmonic, you know, if you have any questions for me, uh, just uh, just uh, write it in, and I'll I'll, I'll feel f I will uh, I will answer anything you guys have. Oh, I owe you um, the the network, so I will I'll talk with Heather after this, and I'll put that out um, as far as the network for preceptors that, that I've uh, been uh, kind of engaged with. And I did find a, a so that I did have success with that. I found a neuro hospitalist that I, I shadowed for a little bit of time, which was was pretty awesome. She was a nurse practitioner. So it was very good um, as far as the network goes. Anyways, you guys have a gr great and wonderful day. Uh, keep safe. Um, advocate for your patients as much as you can and uh, and take care.